word is that which gives us life. And we are not ashamed of that gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Psalm 34. Psalm 34. Again, I'm going to read a little further up than I did than we had for our opening this morning. I want to start at verse 1 and then come on down to 10. It says, and I'm reading out of the NIV, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angels of the Lord encamp around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. We are not ashamed of the gospel. This is my Bible and I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. In Jesus' name. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. As we think about this text, and I am just sharing from the subject of feast of the senses or a feast for the senses. A feast of the senses or a feast for the senses. When I begin to think about this particular text and the beauty of it, we've heard it over and over, many of us, so many times, especially when we get to verse 8, the old taste and see that the Lord is good. When we think about this particular verse of scripture, for many of us, it brings joy to our heart. For many of us, it brings peace to our minds. Why? Because we can know that the Lord is good. But when I begin to think and dig even deeper, I begin to see the power of how God's word brings to, to life uh, all that God is saying and doing through and with us. For that is the job of the ministers. It is and the preacher to bring the word of God to life for the people of God. To make the word of God come to life in the lives of God's people. And I'm here today to help you just know that the word of God wants to show up in my life. Somebody just wave your hand. If you know the word, God wants his word to show up in your life. And that's why we see all through scripture that the word of God appeals to our five senses in so many cases. It appeals to our taste. It appeals to our sight. It appeals to our touch, to our smell, and to our hearing. For those are our five senses, our taste, sight, touch, 
smell, and hearing. The word of God focuses so many times and brings to life so much that appeals to our senses. Matter of fact, I love it that this particular text appeals to your senses. Why? Because it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. This morning and this week and, and as I spent the time just looking at this scripture and looking at what and listening to what God wanted to say, one of the things that I heard was God is palatable. That means when we get in God, God begins to become palatable to us. Some folks, God is not palatable to them. They can't deal with God. They can't take God. They don't want to know God. But I, I am uh, so grateful that God has some folks that love God and love God's word. Matter of fact, I love it that I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord, what? is good. So God is palatable to us and, and God's word is palatable. I love God's word. I eat God's word. It is God's word that I feast. Uh, we used to sing years ago, the windows of heaven are open. The power is falling tonight. I've got joy, joy in my soul since Jesus made everything right. I, I gave him my old filthy garment and he gave me a robe of pure white and that's why I'm happy tonight. I'm feasting on manna from heaven and when we get to that part we realize we understand that the power is that we are able to eat of the manna from heaven and what is that heaven that's not just the heaven that's coming down it is the heaven that lives within us it is the kingdom of heaven that nourishes us that strengthens us that renews us sometimes when food won't do it I love it. I mentioned that song about a year ago uh, that I heard the truth that sing years and years ago. And the girl was singing the song and after a while she got to the chorus that just said, I don't want no peanut butter and jelly because I want my soul to be saved. What it was, was uh, a physical uh, uh, food can't satisfy us when we need the presence and the power and the might of God. You can eat all you want or you can get as full as you want, but still there will be a place that is only reserved for what? The presence of God. That's why I love it that God is able to feed us from heaven. We are able to taste and to see that the Lord is good. When we think about our senses, the power of our senses is God created our senses so pow powerful and the word of God does not shy away from our senses. The word of God does not shy away from our senses. Why? Because it constantly helps us to realize the power that God has placed in us of the senses. And I love that because what happens is God created our senses so powerful that if any one of them is diminished, the other is enhanced. If one of them is diminished, then the other one is enhanced. You've heard and you've seen the stories how someone loses their sight and all of a sudden their hearing becomes even more powerful. Why? That's because God created us like that. That the senses uh, begin to take a hold. The senses become enhanced even when one or another is diminished. Oh, I, I don't want to tell uh, my, uh, my wife's story and so many times uh, we, we, she said she'll tell my story is mine to tell but in this case we were in this story together uh, a couple of months ago when we both had COVID and we were with the little C, we call it the little C. We were at home and, and as those symptoms began to take hold, uh, after about a week, uh, one Sunday, that Sunday or, or Saturday, whenever it was, she began to lose that sense of smell and that sense of taste. And, and even though she lost that sense of smell and that sense of taste, uh, she would say to me, she was like, I would say, well, do you want anything? Do you still want to eat? She was like, well, I'm still hungry because that sense is still there. Uh, that hunger is still there. Even though I can't smell it, 
even though I can't taste it, uh, I still am having, my body still knows that I need to eat or that I need to drink. Why? Because those other senses start to take a hold and we begin to get enhanced in our other senses. And God created us like that. How do we know that God loves and pays special attention to the senses? If we go to the New Testament, we see Jesus. When Jesus does what? So many times we see Jesus what? Touching and healing. Uh, he doesn't just send the word. Some cases he sent the word. But there are other cases when Jesus lays his hands on people and they are healed. Why? Because that touch was important. Matter of fact, uh, the word of God tells us further on, Paul encourages us that, that if there are any sick among us, let them call for the elders of the church and let them anoint them, lay hands on them. Physical touch, I talked about this Thursday night in Bible study, is so key to our survival. Even in scripture, it reminds us the power and let them lay hands on them and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. We see the senses are pretty important to Christ because what? Jesus gives sight to the blind. Oh, I love that. Jesus is helping us to know that that sense is important. Why? Because he takes time to heal the blind. Also, we realize that the sense of hearing is important to our Lord. Why? Because he opens deaf ears. Uh, why? Because those senses are important. I love it how even when we go back and we see the prophets of old, the prophet Elijah says to us and reminds us in the word when he said that here he hears the sound of an abundance of rain. Even when there was no rain in sight, there were no clouds in sight. Here is Elijah uh, saying, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. They got, got to catch this in the spirit because he's not hearing the sound with his physical ears. And this is where it's taking me to my next stage uh, of this place. Why? Because there are times we got to understand that we can hear with our ears and then we can hear with our heart. There's a hearing with the ears, but then there's a hearing that we have with the heart. It is the heart. Uh, that's why God tells us uh, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. But, but with the heart, uh, heart uh, we receive. We are uh, received unto righteousness. That's why we confess with our mouth. Believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus, that God has raised him from the dead. Why? Because with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And with the heart, we believe unto righteousness. Why? Because the heart hears. The heart knows. Somebody say the heart, the heart. So we can hear with our ears, but we also hear with our heart. Let me go one more. Well, we're not just hearing. We don't just hear with our ears, but we hear with our heart. But we also see with our eyes. But then there's another step further where we see with our mind. What we see through the eyes of the mind's eye. The mind, when the mind uh, begins to see. Why? Because sometimes the mind will see things that the eyes never saw. Oh, uh, you said help me with that a little further. Uh, I can help you. Why? Because there are times in your night visions and times in your day visions where your eyes, your physical eyes didn't see it, but your mind's eye saw it. Or you throw, saw it through the eyes of the spirit. You saw it through the eyes of the mind. Or you saw it through the eyes of the spirit. Uh, you ever woke up from a dream and you say, oh my God, it felt like it was so real. I saw this and I saw that. No, you didn't see it with your physical eye. But you saw it with the eye of the mind or the eye of the spirit. Why? Because we're able to physically see, but then we're able to also spiritually see. Oh, we got to be able to do both, not just physically see and physically hear, but also spiritually see and spiritually hear. Uh, and that's where we get to the next level of understanding, which is what I call comprehension skills 101. Why? Because we can read this word a hundred times and some folks will never get anything. But you take somebody else and let them read that same word and all of a sudden tears will run down their eyes. Uh, their heart will begin to leap. Uh, they begin to feel something. They begin to confess. Why? Because they begin to sense and hear. And they begin to see with their spirit. And they begin to hear with their heart. Why? Uh, does somebody else read 
the same word and got nothing. Why? Because they couldn't see and couldn't hear that next level. Oh, I want to tell you that it's important. It's important. The Bible reminds us over and over of the power of healing, of hearing, and of the power of seeing. It is that power where we touch. It is that power where we know not just by the physical touch, but the touch of the spirit. That's why I love the song we used to sing years ago and still sing it every now and then. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me whole. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's healing. Uh, there's power in the touch. It is touching not just physically but spiritually and, and understanding the power to reach God in the spirit. We can also pray in the spirit and it becomes, look at this, God said it becomes a sweet smelling aroma in God's nostril. Oh, I love that. That's how we know that, that the senses are important to God. Because even our prayers go up to, to, to God and become a sweet smelling aroma. When we pray in the spirit, when we pray, uh, not just in English, but when we pray in an unknown tongue that the spirit gives utterance, it is an aroma that goes up to God that gives a sweet smelling aroma. Why? Because it's important to God. We've got to understand that to touch, we can receive that touch even. That invisible hand gives us that physical touch. That invisible hand also gives us that spiritual touch. Why? Because God sees and God knows. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't have this scripture that hundreds and thousands probably have preached over and over. The text where the woman has the issue of blood for 12 long years. And she said, but if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I believe I'll be made whole. Somebody said, oh, we got to know that the senses, the senses, the senses, uh, there's a feast for the senses. The word of God gives us a feast for the senses. Let me just start moving back uh, to my clothes and, and to where I want to just bring this back home. As we see David, the psalm of David. Now this psalm of David is really unique because David writes this psalm uh, uh, just around the time uh, where you look in Samuel and he's talking uh, uh, where he comes to the uh, to Amalek and he's uh, before uh, 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 Amalek and he goes before him and he's standing and he's giving uh, these words to Abimelech, excuse me, Abimelech and he's beginning to share uh, what God has given uh, him even in the presence of Abimelech and when David David comes before Abimelech, uh, he ends up having to go out to the other king of Gash. And when he goes out to the other king of Gash, what happens is David is really in fear of this other king. And David is in fe of fear of this other king. And what happens is David, in order to survive his fear, David does something that is really unique. If you look at it in that text, what David does is David then pretends because he's in the presence of this king of Gash and he's afraid. David then begins to play and perform and act as if he's insane. David acts as if he's insane and David begins to, to start saying crazy stuff and David begins to start writing stuff on the walls that makes no sense. David begins because David wants to get out of there unscathed and unharmed. So David, here's David. David begins to also foam at the mouth. And white foam is coming out of his mouth because he's trying to appear to this king, king to be insane. Therefore, when you see this psalm uh, in most of your captions, it is the psalm of David when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech who drove him away and the king of Gath as he left. Why am I talking about this? Because it brings us to the point that sometimes it doesn't matter what the situation you're in. God will appeal to you as to how to get out. And sometimes we got to realize there is power in acting as if. I'm not talking about acting. 
acting crazy. And sometimes, some of y'all know about acting crazy. Sometimes we've done that too. I heard somebody say uh, many years ago, they said, I may not know karate, but I do know crazy. <laughs> I may not know karate, but I do know crazy. Why? Because sometimes you got to act as if in order to get out of a certain situation. Sometimes you just got to appeal to that other side of the brain. And this is what David did. And this, interestingly enough, is where then David pins this song. What he says in verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why? Because David understands ultimately that God is the deliverer. God is our deliverer, even when you have to act as if to get out of a situation. Or sometimes you got to act as if to even get in the situation. Ultimately, God is our deliverer. So what God does for David, uh, David wants us to know through this psalm that ultimately God will do the same for you. Oh, we used to say what God, what he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. So what he does for David, he ultimately does for every one of us who trusted in him. He ultimately does it for all of us who gives the Lord and who makes the Lord our redeemer, uh, give the Lord our trust through Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb. Why? Because God still is our deliverer. So what does he say? Verse 8, he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, blessed is the one who does what? Who takes refuge in the Lord. The blessing is those of us who not just taste and see, but it's those of us who take refuge in the Lord. Oh, I got to tell you, you got to go to the next step. Some, sometimes I'll be watching those food shows and, and my, uh, our son-in-law, James, uh, uh, the other day when we were in Richmond, he said, Pops, I got a new food show for you to check out. And these uh, persons go around the world eating at all these restaurants. Uh, and James and I, when we say to each other, uh, why are we looking at, why are y'all watching that? Because we're trying to determine where we want to go when we go to these places. Why? Because it ain't enough just to watch it on TV. It ain't enough just to see somebody else eating that good pizza uh, that I love. I love good pizza. It ain't enough to see somebody else eating it. It ain't enough to be in the presence. Sometimes you can be somewhere. Uh, I know sometimes we used to ride through Jamestown and the Flowers Bakery through Jamestown. You ride down Main Street and all of a sudden the smell of that bread starts coming in your nostril. And if it'll get you real good, sometimes you know you ain't gonna stop till you get some of that bread. You stop at the, that's why they got the fruit bakery not far from the uh, from the store. Why? So you can turn on in and, and get you some bread. Uh, I, I grew up in the house where every now and then they make those hot rolls. I remember at church years ago, Mother Scott would make those hot rolls and we'd smell them, but it wasn't enough to smell them. We weren't satisfied until we got to taste them. That's why I'm telling you the, the, the word of God and David knows that it ain't enough just to see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, we can see it. But God is wanting us to not just see it, but taste it. That's why he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It is God that we can taste the goodness. I don't know about you, but when we taste of the goodness of the Lord, I don't know about you, I have tasted and I have seen. Anybody other than me have tasted and seen the goodness of the Lord. Oh, you know what it tastes like. You know what it looks like. You know what it smells like. Why? Because you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good. But the blessing is, blessed is those who do what? Who make and take refuge in him. David is saying, don't just stop there. Uh, know that you can taste and see that the Lord is good. How do we ensure that we taste and see when we make the Lord our refuge? Verse 9 says, fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him do what? Lack nothing. See, that's the place I've been, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the goal. And that's it. even if you're there, that's where we want to stay. The place where we lack nothing. Why? Because those who fear, what is that word fear? It doesn't mean that are scared of the Lord. That means those who have an utmost respect and an awe. 
We are all in his presence. Uh, that's why when uh, the song started playing and every praise is to our God, folks started standing up. Folks started getting up. Why? Because as soon as we said it, they came in what? In awe or in holy reverence or fear. That's what fear in scripture means. This particular fear, it means a holy awe or holy reverence. And so when we sing every praise is to our God, we know that to be a fact. That because we have tasted and we have seen. So we taste and see because the fear, the awe, the admonition, the respect is to our God. For those who fear him lack nothing. Last verse of scripture. Why? Because the lions may grow weak and hungry. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Somebody say, I'm seeking, I'm seeking, I'm a seeker. Those who seek the Lord, it doesn't mean God is running from us. It just means that we want to know more about him. More, more about Jesus. More of his mercy, more of his love, more of his grace. I've tasted and seen. See, you got to understand that David understood the power of tasting and seeing. Why? Because just one taste. When, when you when you have uh, that which is uh, really good, like you had, I go back to a good pizza. When you've had Elizabeth pizza here in North Carolina, when you had Elizabeth pizza, you can have a little Caesar's. I know we got some Little Caesars fans, and I know we got some Pizza Hut chains fans at chain fans, and I know we got the Papa John's fans. But let me tell you, when you've had a real good, uh, a, a real good Elizabeth Italian style uh, handmade pizza, it's something that's totally different that you don't get it out when you've tasted and seen of God. When you've had a good dose, as we like to say, of the Holy Ghost. There's something within you that drives you. It's something you don't want to not taste. It's something you don't want to not see. That's why so many of us are hungry for the presence of God. Somebody say hungry. Oh, I love it how, how the motivational speaker, uh, 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 Mr. Brown, used to say you got to be hungry. Uh, you got to be hungry. Why? In the things of God. God wants people who are hungry. That's why the Bible says, he that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Somebody say, shall be filled. You got to have a hunger for righteousness. You got to have a thirst. You got to want it. Somebody say, you got to want it. Those of us, they understand this, that once you have tasted and once you have seen that the Lord is good, it drives you. It leads you. It compels you. You are desiring to be in his presence. I, I want to feel that place again. I want to feel that touch again. I want to know the presence of God again. Uh, that's why he says, uh, uh, don't take your joy from me. Uh, uphold me with thy free spirit. And whatever you do, don't take your joy from me. Why? Because it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Oh, uh, Thank God for what people do for us. Thank God for the things people give us. But it's nothing like being touched by the hand of the Lord. It's nothing like the Lord uh, uh, blessing you and, uh, and moving on your life. That's why I was saying this morning, uh, yes, God was good in my morning meditation. But it was something else. We passed the Maryland call this morning and, and said, Bishop, God just gave me a word that I want to tell you that God has given you strength. God has given you strength for the journey, but that wasn't enough. She said, she just started bro breaking into prayer and just begin to pray and, and intercede uh, uh, for God to do what God needed to do. Why? Because we hunger for that. We desire, we thirst for that. Uh, why? Because we need that. We want it. We can't live without it. Why? Because we've tasted and we've seen. Somebody say, I've tasted and I've seen. Uh, that's why That's why those of us who've had a real good uh, dose, uh, we keep coming back for more. Uh, that's why we're here today, because we keep coming back for more. That's why folks return week after week, because they want more of God. We want more. It's not enough just to be a, a, you know, a little dab, or do you? I need God to pour out God's spirit. I need God to pour out of God's spirit upon me. Somebody say, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. So God, I want to just know you in the fullness. I want God to flood me. 
That's why we sing, sweep over my soul. Holy Spirit, sweep over my soul. Oh my God. Why? Because we want God to touch us in a way that only God can. Somebody say, only God, only God. Only God can heal. Only God can deliver. Only God can set free. Only God, when God does what only God can do. Somebody say, what only God can do. That's why we say God specializes in things impossible. And he can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power, can do. Somebody say, I want more of God. I don't know about you, but I want more of God. Why? Because we taste it. We've seen that the Lord is good. Matter of fact, it ain't over. Some of us keep coming back for more. God, I want you to do more. I'm not satisfied with what you did last Sunday. That's why I'm back this Sunday. Because I believe you got something else to say. I believe you want to do something else in me. God, I want more of you. And I want more of you because I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord is good. I want to encourage us today.